Quality of product is as firm, so fully packed. SMFT. SMFT. That's right. That means fine tobacco. So raw. Here's one thing you can be packed on always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The f- enjoyment. Smoke that s- fine tobacco. Lucky. <laughs> Strike program. Star Pack Benny with Barry Livingston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last week we intimated that it was raining here in sunny California. Now that was purely for your entertainment. And to prove to you that the weather here is absolutely wonderful. We bring you a testimonial from one of our satisfied residents. <laughs> ah, listen to that little birdie singing. <laughs> well, he's trying, even though he isn't over his cold yet. At any rate, since this is a beautiful day, let's go out to Beverly Hills to Jack Benny's house, where we find Jack and the gang in the backyard practicing archery. Do I hold the bow like this, Jack? Yes. Now pull the string all the way back. Take aim. Now let go. <laughs> Say, that was pretty good, Mary. You hit the target. You know, you only missed the bullseye by three inches. Yeah. Now it's my turn. Stand back a little, Mary. You too, Phil. Watch me hit the bullseye. Here I go. (laughs) Who moved the target? Huh? Nobody moved the target, Jackson. It's still behind you. (laughs) Hand me another arrow, Mary. Here. That first one shot there was an accident. Now watch me. Stand aside. Here I go. Ow! 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 Hey, hey, what happened? The arrow fell out and he got his head caught in the bowl. (laughs) Well, that could happen to anybody. If you kids will stop bothering me, I can hit that target at 100 yards. I'm an expert marksman. Some marksman. You even had a bomb site put on your door key so you could hit the keyhole. Bomb side, bomb side, bomb side. <laughs> if you cut out the talking, I'll show you that I can do it. Ready? Aim. Good luck, Mr. Benny. Huh? I said good luck. Oh, it's you, Larry. When did you come in? Oh, about ten minutes ago. Well, why didn't you speak to me before? With that bow and arrow, I thought you were an Indian. Well, I do have a little Indian blood in me. Yeah, he's the last of the Waukegans. <laughs> Mary, stop. Now, if everybody be quiet, I'll show you how to... Phil, get away from in front of that target. What, and get hit? (laughs) Now, don't be so funny and stand aside. Ready? Aim? Mr. Benny, would you let Miss Livingston hold your bow and arrow for a minute? What for? Well, I want to bend over and tie my shoelace. (laughs) Don't worry, I'm not aiming at you. Now, stand back, everybody, and give me room. Ready? Aim. Hello, Jack. Hi, everybody. Oh, hello, Hiya, Dante. Now, interruptions, nothing but interruptions. Well, you ought to be glad, Jackson. You couldn't hit that target if you sneezed with a mouthful of buckshot. <laughs> no, I couldn't, eh? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Phil. Since you're such a wise guy, I'll bet you a dime that I can take this bow and arrow and shoot an apple off of Don Wilson's head. Now, put up or shut up. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, Jackson, you got a bet. Now, just a second. Just a second. <laughs> Here's my dime. Well, here's my dime. All right, well, let Mary hold the money. Gee, fellas, and I'm not even bonded. <laughs> we'll take a chance. Okay, Phil, I'll show you. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I'm not going to stand there with an apple on my head and take the chance of... Don, going. Phil and I are betting. What have you got to lose? <laughs> huh? It's too dangerous, and I'm not going to do it. Don, have you read your contract? <laughs> On page 12, volume 6, paragraph 3, is the apple shooting clause. (laughs) Well, 
which also includes holding a cigarette between your teeth when I'm having rifle practice. <laughs> now, you get out there and put that apple on your head. Oh, all right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? That silly clause you've got in my contract. What is it, Livy? Well, when I'm too old for radio, I've got to work around his house. That's for your... <laughs> That's for your own protection, sister. Now, Don, put that apple on your head and stand there by that tree. Okay. Ready? Aim. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Don't shoot. A bird just lit on Don's head and is pecking at the apple. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you stopped me, Mary. I wouldn't want to hurt a poor little bird. Go away, Bertie. Go away. Bertie. Bertie, go away. <laughs> Don, get rid of that bird, will you? Go away, buddy. Go on, go on, go away. What's that, birdie? Well, what do you know? <laughs> That's right, birdie. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Say, you're a smart little bird. Now, go away, Bertie. Fly away. Go, go, go. Fly away. <laughs> well! Well, that's the cutest bird I ever saw. All right, Jackson. All right. Quit stalling. What about the bet we got? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Shoot the apple off of Don's head. I will. I will. Don, put that apple back on. Okay. Now, watch me... Don, put it in the middle of your head. Don't try to look sporty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, watch this, kid. Ready? <laughs> Aim. <laughs> Mary, give Phil the dime. <laughs> yes, you broke the window in your neighbor's house. I know, I know. Well, that's enough archery for today. Let's go inside. Larry, you can stay out here and play with the bow and arrow. Come on, kids, come on. We're going to the What do we do now? I don't know, Jackson, but we've been hiding in the house for three days. It ought to be space to go out now. <laughs> yeah. And say, Don, it's about time you took that apple off your head. Or put a feather in it and sell it to Hella Hopper. <laughs> anyway, kids, how about going in the den and we'll have a little game of... Someone's at the door. Yeah? Mr. Benny, I'm Joe Kearns of the United Press, and I had an appointment with you today. Oh, yes, yes. Come right in. Oh. I didn't realize what time it was. Just step right in the library. Oh, thank you. Okay, oh, you go ahead without me. I'll be busy for a little while. 
Check it out, won't you? Thanks. Oh, my, what a lovely library and such a beautiful collection of books. So many of them. What are they, uh, Shakespeare? No, those are contracts I have with my cast. And... <laughs> now, if I remember correctly, you wanted an interview about me and my radio program. Hmm? Yes, but I want to do this story from a little different angle. I want to know about the members of your cast. Hmm. Well, uh, what is it you'd like to know? Well, you've been on the air about 14 years, haven't you? That's right, 14 years. I started when I was 22. <laughs> Which makes me exactly 30... I understand, Mr. Benny. Good. Good. Now, uh, tell me, how long has Mary Livingston been on your program? Mary? Well, Mary joined me after I'd been on the air just about three months. Mm, I see. And uh, Don Wilson? Don? Well, Don's been with me a little over 11 years. Phil Harris about 10. And Larry Stevens... I think you know the story of Larry. Yes, I heard it on Mr. Anthony's program. <laughs> Yes, yes. He, he decided in my favor. <laughs> Those are the new volumes on the top shelf. <laughs> and as for my career in radio, I've been... Uh, a... Tell me about Rochester, your valet. Hmm. Rochester? Yes. How long has he been with you? Well, Rochester been with me nine years. Say, that's funny. What a coincidence. It's exactly nine years this month. Well... Uh, tell me, Mr. Benny, how did you happen to find Rochester in the first place? Well, this is quite a long story, Mr. Kern. Yes. You see, nine years ago, I was in New York. It was March, 1936. One day, the weather was so nice, I decided to take a little drive. Uh huh? I was driving along 7th Avenue, around 134th Street, all alone in my car and enjoying the ride immensely. <laughs> In my Mary Maxwell car, I go roaming near and far. Da da dum da dum da dum da da dum da dum da dum. <laughs> ah, there's nothing like an auto ride on a day like this. Gosh, how time flies! Here it is, 1936, and I bought this car in 1924. I was only 10 years old when I got it. Yes, sir. I understand the model after this one had the crank in front. <laughs> Gosh, what won't they think of next? Huh? Well, I guess I'll step on the gas and let her out. <laughs> oh, darn it, it's stalled again. I'm going to take this car and sell it to the first junkyard I can find... <laughs> it always works. <laughs> well, I might as well get going. <laughs> ah, what a day. In my Mary Maxwell car, I go roaming near and far. Da da dum, da dum, da dum. <laughs> Well, how do you like that? This is all your fault. My fault? You think just because you drive a taxi, you can smash into other people's cars and forget all about the traffic rules and regulations. But, mister... Well, I'm going to sue you and your taxi company for every penny's worth of damage to my car because it was your fault. But, mister, I was parked when you hit my taxi. <laughs> You were parked? Yeah, and in my garage, too. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, anyway, this was your fault as much as mine. And I'm going to see... Gee, mister, look down on the floor. I'm awful sorry the collision killed your cat. The poor thing That's is... not my cat. It slipped off my head. <laughs> I'm going to sue your taxi company. Let me see your driver's license. Okay. Here it is. Hmm. Rochester Van Jones. Five feet, ten inches. 155 pounds. 31 years old. Brunette? <laughs> Please see your 
your license, mister. Here. And remember my name and address because I'm going to sue you. Sue me? Yes. I'm going to take you into court and get every cent you've got in the world. You can reach in my pocket and do that. <laughs> well, you better think it over, and I'm willing to be reasonable. If you want to arbitrate and settle this out of court, I'll be home all afternoon. <laughs> Do you think that new taxi driver you hired will work out? I don't know, Amos. <laughs> Doggone, I don't see why you had to hire a driver in the first place. We only got one cab, and I can drive that. Listen, Amos, when you reach our position in the business world, you has got to have people's working for you. Yeah, I can't see where we done reached no position, though. Amos, did you realize that last month we lost less money than any month that we has been in business? <laughs> yeah, but that was a reason for that. Last month only had 28 days in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Amos, if we can find a month short enough, we are liable to break even. <laughs> But, and I still think that we should wait till we start making money before we go around hiring people. No, no. People is the thing. <laughs> if we ain't got nobody working for us and we go bankrupt, there ain't gonna be nobody sorry for us but us. And us ain't enough people to have <laughs> for us. Well, and uh, we ain't bankrupt yet. I know, but we is getting into those long months. <laughs> well, I still think that I should go out and drive that taxi cab myself. Uh, here comes Rochester, your new driver. Uh, well, hello there, Rochester. How was business this morning? Bang up, gentlemen. Bang up! <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, what did you collect? A busted taillight, a bent fender, and a dead cat with a part in the middle. <laughs> uh, you mean you done had an accident? No, no, the other driver had the accident, but I was unfortunate enough to be too close to the scene. <laughs> This was bad. Uh, who was it you had the accident with? A man named Jack Benny. Jack Benny? That must be the radio comedian. If it is, this is really bad. <laughs> he is supposed to be the cheapest man in the world. The cheapest man in the world? Yeah. I heard he lives so close to his money that even his skin feels like an outsider. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I also hear that he's got a zipper on his wallet that is yet to make his first zip. <laughs> what a man he must be. Oh, he can't be so bad, gentlemen. In fact, he said he'd be at his hotel all afternoon if we wanted to arbitrate. If we wanted to arbor who? <laughs> the man said arbitrate. Arbitrate? Well, now, if that ain't a coincidence... Arbitrate happens to be the one word in the English language with which I ain't familiar. Uh, why don't you look it up in the dictionary, Andy? Yeah, that's what I'll do. I got the dictionary right here. Arbitrate. R. <laughs> uh, what's the second letter? You ain't even got the first. I know, I know. I'll get the first later. I'm working on the second. Now, let me see. Well, hello there, boys. How's everything going? Oh, not so good, Kingfish. Rochester here done had an accident in the taxi cab. Well, that's bad, bad. It's worse than that. The man he accidented with is going to arbitrate him. <laughs> Uh-oh. That ain't good. Well, how do you know? Was you ever arbitrated? <laughs> Gentlemen, I don't think you know the meaning of the word. Let me see that dictionary. Now, I think it begins with an A. Let's see. Arbitrarily. Arbitrary. Here it is. Arbitrary. To act as an arbiter. Well... <laughs> Now, 
That's logical. <laughs> to mediate. Yeah, well, that ain't told us nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> to act as an umpire. Well, the man wants to play baseball. <laughs> No, 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 Kingfish. Listen, you was thinking of umpire. This here is umpire. Well, what is the difference? Well, there's a baseball umpire, the British umpire, and the umpire state player. There's three entirely different words. It is arbitrary to settle a dispute. That's it, gentlemen. I think Mr. Benny wants to settle this dispute. Oh, I knew that all the time. <laughs> well, Kingfish, you better come along with us. We got to go see the, uh, the man that Rochester accidented with. Uh, yeah, I tell you what. You go along in my place, Kingfish. I better take the taxi over to the shop and fix it. Yeah, okay, we better go. And remember now, when we seize the man... Let's all arbitrate in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to watch that. Come on, let's go. Here we are, Kingfish. Uh, this is the right place, ain't it, Rochester? That's what it says here on the card. Yeah, good. Yes? Uh, Mr. Benny, I, as Andrew H. Brown, the president, chief executive, and general manager of the Fresh Air Taxi Cab Company, Incorporated. Oh, yes, you men are here about the accident. Uh, come right in. Uh, I presume that your driver has informed you of the circumstances and my position in this case. Yeah, he's done that. In fact, we have discussed this case in open meeting with the stockholders, the other officers of the incorporation, and our legal advisors. And we don't come to the conclusion that $50 is a fair settlement. $50? Uh, well, I, uh, well, okay. Oh, uh, you as a fair man, Mr. Benny. Just make that check payable to Andrew H. Brown. All right, I'll make... What? <laughs> me pay you? Why, you've got to pay me. Uh, you take over, Kingfish. I'm all arbitrated out. <laughs> now, I mean business. I'll turn this matter over to a lawyer. A uh, lawyer? Uh, here's my card. Wait a minute, Kingfish. You was on our side. <laughs> I am? Oh, yeah, yeah, I am on your side. Yeah, that's right. Now, look, you boys pay me for the damage to my car, or I'll take you to court. Well, just a minute, Mr. Benny. You was acting kind of hasty. You ain't even let us tell our side of the story. What? You don't see nobody's side of the story but your own. Wait a minute. Are you insinuating that I'm narrow-minded, unreasonable, and hard-headed? That's what he said. That's what the man said. He knows <laughs> Well, I can see we're not getting anywhere. I'll have my lawyer see you in the morning and... We'll... Uh, just a minute, Mr. Benny. Uh, hold it, please. Uh, uh, say, Andy, uh, come here. Uh, we got to do a little conferencing. Uh, no, no, Rochester, you stay where you are. Uh, this is just for the executives. Yeah, Rochester, we'll put out a bulletin for the employers. <laughs> uh, what is it, Kingfish? What is it? Look here, I just got an idea. It looked like we was going to have to pay Mr. Benny and we ain't got no cash. Uh-huh. Now, I noticed that Mr. Benny come to the door himself, and that means that he ain't got no gentleman's gentleman. You know, a valet? Uh-huh. And Rochester, as the present situation proves, ain't such a good driver for your taxi cab. Do you follow me? Oh, you mean you want to palm Rochester off on Mr. Benny? Right. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. If we can settle this case by giving him Rochester as a valet, we'll be curing two headaches with one aspirin. <laughs> but listen... How are we going to get Mr. Benny to need a valet? Uh, leave it to me, leave it to me. Yeah. Uh, oh, Miss Benny. Yes? Uh, we have uh, finished our conferencing and uh, has agreed to make a settlement in your favor. Good. Now, uh, I have my witness here, which is Andy, and if you will have your valet uh, come and be your witness, I... Uh... Valet? I don't have a valet. You don't have a valet? A man of your social position? A man of your prestige? Well, no valid. Why, that's unbelievable. A man as famous as you is in the entertainment world? Why, I understand that even Fred Allen has somebody that wait on him hand and foot. That's his wife. <laughs> anyway, it's not my fault that I haven't got a valid. I've always wanted one, but the right man never came along. He's here yeah. now. What? Gentlemen, gentlemen, stop forming a circle around me. <laughs> 
quiet, Rochester, quiet. And shake hands with your new boss. Now, no, no, not so fast. Come on, Anna, we gotta go. Now, now, wait a minute, Goodbye, wait a minute. Goodbye, Mr. Bell. Good luck to you, Rochester. Well, Rochester, as long as you're my valet now, you may as well get busy. You can put these shirts that just came back from the laundry in my top bureau drawer. Is this it, Mr. Berry? That's it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Look in this drawer. Your dead cat had kittens. <laughs> Never mind that. And just for that, you can't have Wednesday off. And that, Mr. Kearns, is how I found Rochester. Well, that's very interesting. I'm sure I can get a good story out of it. Thanks very much, Mr. Benny. You're welcome. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's what we'd like to just... First, here's my good friend, F.P. Bowie. Mr. Floyd...